Uh, hey, Alyssa. Hey, Sam. Are you ready? I am ready. Hit me. <laughs> <laughs> I want everybody to know I was late for work this morning, okay? <laughs> That's okay. So there might be a write-up after this. I don't know. Why are your eyes watering? <laughs> oh, probably because I just woke up. <laughs> or because I've let you down. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, but I came to the table with an idea. So maybe a little redemption there. Don't know. Too busy. It is, yeah. Uh, so last night, well, yesterday, Sam posted on her Twitter, um, what's your favorite picture of yourself and why? And I posted this picture from four years ago, which is still my favorite picture for some reason. I, still, I, I haven't seen it. Oh, really? No. I don't know why it's my favorite picture. It's just like me when I was blonde in Toronto in the apartment that I loved, just to like having a little attitude. But um, somebody commented on that photo and was like, oh my gosh, I didn't even know like blonde Alyssa was a thing. They were like super nice. They were like equally beautiful, but so different, like um, whatever. And I was just like, it's crazy to me that like, they, they said that I looked like a whole different person. And it's crazy to me that that person was only four years ago. Mm. And that's kind of what sparked this idea that so much can change in such a short amount of time. Like my life has 180 in <laughs> seven years, I would say. Yeah. And it's so crazy to me. And so I was thinking we could talk about like um, who we thought we'd be when we were younger. Like, let's go like all the way back. Like first. We're going all the way back. Yeah. <laughs> first, first job. I'm pretty sure that's like the start to a Christina Aguilera song. Is it? Yeah. Let's go way back. Yeah. It's from the album that like very few people knew about. Let's do it, Christina. Yeah. <laughs> let's go way back to the first job that we wanted. Like who we thought we'd be maybe even like, um, with kids or marriage or like whatever. And kind of to like where we are now and then where we foresee ourselves in the future it can be like a little time capsule to see like Ooh. you know what I mean like if we were okay I will say when we like did our goals for 2020 um <laughs> so young and naive why are your eyes watering we were like we were like oh let's do this like fun thing where we talk about our goals for 2020 and then we'll like come back throughout the year and see how our goals are going and then fucking COVID <laughs> came in like a wrecking ball and was like fuck your shit I came in like a wrecking ball. <laughs> so do you know this a curse to you, talk about our future plans yeah maybe i shouldn't um but do you know what i have hiked quite a few mountains and that was one of my goals okay well one of my goals was to have family game night and um we had a lot of family game nights we had some okay we had some <laughs> we didn't have you know what the thing was is that if, it was hard to have a static game night like yeah. every monday because for the three of us it's good but for jeff like he has work sometimes i know that really fucking so, kills it doesn't it i know we need everybody in the house to have at home jobs which i guess covid yeah did that for us <laughs> you're welcome <laughs> yeah enjoy <laughs> um <clears throat> anyway yeah i wanted to like kind of like do a little deep dive so when you were like itty itty bitty how itty bitty are we talking like the f from the first time that you knew that like a job was a job what what did you want to do I wanted to be a marine biologist like when you were itty itty bitty when I was pretty young yeah and what did that like look like to you like what did your life look like um I think that I just see this is the thing that's so weird about my fear of man-made objects submerged in water yeah <laughs> because like I feel really comfortable and like safe being on the water like okay. in a boat totally on top of it. fine doesn't bother me like swimming doesn't bother me none of that shit bothers me but it's just like you know chains and water kind of fucked up but mm. um I don't know I I just liked the idea of like working with animals um I liked the idea of being able to like explore new things and like you know there's like a statistic that like less than five percent of like the ocean has been studied <clears throat> right. um so I thought that that was really cool because I was like oh like I could find new things and you know oh you wanted to discover new species <clears throat> i mean if i'm fucking down there you had lofty goals even at like five yeah i, I like was that. going for it um what was your favorite animal back then okay this doesn't align okay but probably like a tiger i think oh okay. always my fave <laughs> okay. marine biologist don't really give a fuck but love a tiger <laughs> <laughs> love a tiger though <laughs> um yeah so i think that i always wanted to like do something with animals for the longest time um and then uh, I, when I was like 12, I emailed this 
university in Australia for marine biology that I was going to go to. At 12? Yeah, and they emailed me back and they were like, thanks so much for like emailing us. We're so excited, blah, blah, blah. Like, can't wait to meet you one day. Like, oh, they were so nice oh. about it. Because I was like, I'm 12. <laughs> like, and they were like, cool, bitch. Um, That's nice, though. Yeah, they were really, really nice. And then my goals eventually around that <clears throat> faded. Do you know why? Um, partially because fucking Carson Kirkwood. <clears throat> oh, <laughs> Okay. Um, There's a story here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, th- I believe it was like in sixth grade, maybe. Um, or was it later? It doesn't matter. Anyways, Carson Kirkwood. Um, we were talking about like what we wanted to be like to the whole class kind of thing. And um, I was like, I want to be a marine biologist. And he was like, do you want to have a family? And I was like, yeah. And he was like, well, you can't be a marine biologist because you're on the ocean for months at a time. And then he went up and he was like, I want to be a marine biologist. <laughs> I'm like, you fucker, you're fucking gatekeeping marine biology in sixth grade, you motherfucker. <laughs> Who thinks of that? I His know. mom or dad must have said that to him. Dude, yeah, <laughs> fucking abysmal outlook. So anyway. And this is how the circle <laughs> goes. Yeah, so that's why I'm doing podcasts now. <laughs> because of Carson Kirkwood in sixth grade. <laughs> uh but anyways he uh he planted a seed of doubt in my mind yeah no kidding and that was the end that was it was that easy to and I said never again will a man shape my future (laughs) thank you Carson yeah um but yeah I think I think it just like slowly faded and stuff like that and then I had a lot of um wandering years where I was like I don't know what I'm gonna fucking do yeah what was your goal as a wee one so I too had my dreams shattered by a man Named my father, typical. who was his birthday yesterday. Happy birthday, Dad. P.S. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I think I can, I know that I was on like our swing set. Like we had like a little swing set at my dad's house, and I think he was just like asking me what I wanted to be when I grew up. And I said, so he could shoot you down. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> and uh, I said, uh, gas station attendant. And he said what? And he said that's not a job. Well, technically, it is it a job. It is a job, Steve. Dad. <laughs> okay. Um, I think what he meant is it's not a career, maybe? Yeah, I think that he wanted me to come up with, like, to have a little bit more Sam goals, you know, like, loftier yeah. goals than for me to be a gas station attendant, which is such a juxtaposition between my mom because my mom was always like, I don't care what you do as long as you're happy. Yeah. And at that point, being a gas station attendant was what made me happy. Like, I, th- <laughs> I thought that would be fire. Yeah. And like, there's, I, tr- I truly see like no um, like sense of hierarchy in jobs. I really love when people just fucking do their job well. Mm. Like, I don't care what job it is you're doing or what job it is I was doing. I just wanted it to be done well. Yeah. That's what's sexy to me. That's what's like attractive to me. So I thought that my job as a gas station attendant was like going to be fire because I got to pump gas all day and I really liked the smell of gas. (laughs) Okay. That was, that was, that was my Your dad was just trying to get you off the gas. (laughs) So anyway, my dreams to be a gas station attendant was like, that was quickly, but I didn't lose hope, honestly. Like I kind of just kept it like to myself. That that's what I wanted to do for a long time. You knew that you had to keep your dreams hidden. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't I wasn't allowed to have these dreams out loud. And then I think it, I was probably like 10 or 11 when I decided that I wanted to be a lawyer. Oh, you changed course. Changed course in a big way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And surprisingly, my dad didn't really like that one either. Um, but I think it's because he was like bitter because my my mom and my dad have been separated since I was like but like in in nappies um and my mom works at a lawyer's office so I think he was like no you can't be like your mom (laughs) (laughs) but uh I wanted to be a lawyer and I I was like that for a really really long time too and in grade six yeah probably the same time we had to like say what we wanted to do and And if Carson Kirkwood showed up he did yeah and he was like you want a family (laughs) Lawyers can't have family. (laughs) Yeah, well, you can't. Um, No, we had to, like, talk about our plan and how we were going to get there. And I was um, really prepared because I had talked to my mom about it. And I can't remember exactly what I said because, obviously, I've abandoned that dream also. So I was like, oh, I'm going to go to school for four years and then I'm going to go to law school and then I have to article for a year. And then they were, like, so impressed because I, like, knew that I had to article. And they were like, how will you know when you've succeeded? And I was like, when my name tag's on the door. (laughs) Oh. <laughs> wow. <Beach. laughs> 
<laughs> I remember that because it was like a mic drop because everybody like, you're like, take that. Yeah, because when my teacher was like, how are you going to know when you get there? Everybody's like, I don't know. And I was like, well, my name's on the door. <laughs> so I wanted to be a lawyer for a really long time. And I really think that I could have succeeded at that point. Now, I don't know if I could get past my anxiety. Oh, really? No, I'd be like sitting there in the courtroom. And like a lot of law, you don't actually have to go to to court like you have to go to court like very seldom um probably in the in the like area that I would have chosen which is probably land development yeah <laughs> you don't really gotta you know debate go often. to trial <laughs> yeah it's kind of just like dirt dirt doesn't really fight back <laughs> you know <laughs> that's, that's what my mom always says anyway so yeah I don't even know because in grade 10 we had clubs I've talked about this before because I'm so confused as to like where the clubs went <laughs> you know what I mean like we had this like club day where they had all these dope clubs like set up and then I I don't remember ever being able to like go to a club but then when I was going through our yearbook recently and they had a clubs page and I was like Divic? there was like a golf club um peer peers did you like maybe miss the deadline for signing up or something well but there the one that I signed up for was debate team Okay, see where, see how I brought that back? <laughs> but it, I didn't see a debate team picture in there, so I wonder if they didn't have enough people sign up or something. But yeah, so they probably scrapped the clubs that didn't have enough. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, I signed up for debate club. And even in grade six, I went to a speech competition. Ooh. Although my speech that I had written got deleted off of my computer. And so I had to write it the night before. And then I was super nervous when I went up. Yeah, and I kind of like fumbled it. Oh, shit. But it was cool that I got picked. There was only two students that got picked from the whole school to go to the speech competition. Damn. It was really cool. And it, because it was only two of us, we we got to ride in our teacher's car. Like, you know, it's usually like a... I wouldn't, I wouldn't like that. <laughs> it was weird, but it felt like... Um, Very exclusive. Yeah, it, it was like, oh, like we're not taking a school bus. Like <laughs> we're getting in the Corolla. <laughs> yeah, and I'm, I'm pretty sure they, they um, got us DQ for lunch. Like oh. those gross, like smooshed hamburgers, uh, but gross. it was it was pretty cool. I felt pretty elite again. Um, but yeah, I wanted to sign up for debate team so that I could like further this this debate career. But then again, I was going through I was going through this like giant old box of stuff. That's how I found like the yearbook and all my old journals. And in my old <laughs> journal, which I've I've never really kept a journal, I would like journal once a year. Mm. because I decided I was going to be one of those bitches that like journals. Yeah, I would buy a diary, write like two days and then like never again. Yeah, that was me too. Yeah. And in it, it was like, <laughs> I want to be famous. One day I will be famous. <laughs> I know in my heart I will be famous. <laughs> oh, wow. And then it's like, my bus is coming. Talk later. <laughs> Talk later. <laughs> As if you need to like sign off from your diary. It's like, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. You were mid-sentence. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Talk so, later. Yeah. So some somewhere along the line, my dreams switched from wanting to be a lawyer to wanting to be an actor. And then well, I Well, more specifically, just famous. Just famous. But I wanted to be famous as because an actor. Because an actor, yeah. Yeah. But honestly, school kind of shot me down to be an actor, too. I, I f- literally never got a role that was, like, important in, <laughs> in high school. Every role is important. No, that is that is true. Yeah, they yeah. hold each other up. Did Mr. Wade teach you that? Probably. Yeah, probably because he's like, sorry, <laughs> every role is important. <laughs> um, I agree. I do think that every role is important, but like, I got shot down so much. Yeah. In high school, and like, I'm not saying I'm the best actor, but like, damn. Yeah. I wasn't like that bad. <laughs> <laughs> he he played his favorites. That's for sure. I was soldier number two. <laughs> okay <laughs> anyway um <laughs> so I wanted to be an actor and that's basically like what I continued if there were people in my yearbook that wrote um have fun at the famous academy like I guess there was like a joke that I was going to the famous academy oh wow yeah I wanted to go to um the New York, New York film, film academy. academy yeah and I was like pretty set that that was going to happen like I looked up the tuition and everything yeah I remember that that was a thing yeah but the tuition was like 20 grand per semester (sighs) per semester U.S. yeah Yeah. (laughs) well even at that point I wasn't even thinking about the conversion rate yeah (laughs) but it was very very steep and then gosh after that I I wanted to be a teacher I'm remembering now what what I know very very briefly you went through a lot of 
like here, there, and everywhere. I know. Yeah, I wanted to get a dual degree. So what actually happened after high school was I moved to Edmonton and then I moved back very swiftly. And when I moved back, I realized like, okay, that was like fucked up. I need to do something with my life, basically. Mm. And I looked into going to college and I wanted to do a dual degree in um, secondary education and I can't remember what it was called, but it was basically dramatic arts. Like I wanted to be a high school teacher, but also teach um, theater. Okay. Yeah. So I looked into doing a dual degree and then I actually did go back to college for psychology. And then what? And then I dropped out. Yeah, well, but like <laughs> what What was your next like career goal after um, that? I don't think that I had an idea of what I wanted my career to look like after that because I kind of continued like when I when I lived in Edmonton, I applied at the fun, casual fine dining restaurant <laughs> that I worked at for eight years. <laughs> and when I moved back, they didn't immediately hire me back because they didn't know who I was. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> dust on my shoulder um but then when they did hire me back I worked there for a long time and I worked there when I was going to college as well for a little bit um but when I got the opportunity to go open the new stores with them it kind of just like took over my life yeah because it was really fun and I was making you know at that point a lot of money for my age and like what I knew to money to be sort of thing yeah and uh I just kind of continued with that and new opportunities kept like popping up and so that kind of seemed like a career and then I kind of looked more into like a career with that restaurant yeah so I probably saw myself as like well I originally I saw myself as a bar manager Mm. and then after that I saw myself as like a regional bar manager but then ultimately um I decided that was not for me yeah (laughs) but I think that's what I wanted my career to look like for that time yeah, you really freaking went all over the map. I know. Lo- gas station attendant, lawyer, famous. <laughs> <laughs> Just famous. <laughs> Teacher. Whatever. Being whatever. Famous. <laughs> Alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What about you after, uh, what was this? What was marine it? biology. After marine, yeah. I feel like, yeah, I just had my, my years where I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do. And I didn't really focus on it too much I don't think um and then I started watching this person on YouTube um that did makeup tutorials and she would always go to IMATS every year which is like a makeup trade show um and then I found out that there was an IMATS in Vancouver and we lived like four hours away at the time and so I asked my mom if she would take me to IMATS and she was like sure so then we went to IMATS and then I was like oh I'm being a makeup artist for sure Um, and is that when you got into makeup had you already been purchasing makeup at this point? I, I kind of started like playing around with makeup in like maybe like eighth grade or ninth grade. Um, I remember this girl Kendra showed me how to do eyeliner, like black eyeliner in my waterline, and I was like, "Wow, I have never looked better." <laughs> <It's crazy. laughs> um, and then I would like carry black eyeliner in my pocket all the time because it would always like fade off throughout the day, so I would like reapply my eyeliner like twenty times a day. Um, and then uh, I would play with like my mom's old makeup and stuff like that and then in grade 10 I bought my first pair of like eyelashes and that was it that's when I met you you were already wearing eyelashes yeah yeah so um and then I I wasn't really like thinking of doing it as a career and then when I went to IMATS I was just like so inspired by like because they do like seminars where like artists talk and stuff like that and they show you sometimes like different techniques and like I was just so inspired by watching artists do this and like learning all these little like tips and tricks and stuff and then that was that and then I went home and I applied to the makeup school that I ended up going to really I I got accepted like when I was still in grade 11 I'm pretty sure and then so I like but like obviously like I had to wait to graduate yeah um but uh yeah and then that was it and then you went to makeup school yeah and then when I was in makeup school I really wanted to um like join the union and work on films that was kind of like what I wanted to do and then um as I started like working more in the industry and stuff like that I was like honestly like within film like well I mean you know like Mm -hmm. no matter what you're doing in film basically like you start from like the bottom of the bottom and you have to like work so fucking hard to get to the top like years and years and years which like I mean as with any job but like I think within film specifically it's just really hard because like a lot of makeup artists like you're powdering people's skin and like Mm -hmm. you're you're not really doing a whole lot and it's not like a lot of like fun creative stuff unless you're like the key artist Mm -hmm. um and so like special effects 
Yeah, exactly. So <clears throat> it kind of like lost a little bit of its allure to me. And then when I started working on sets, like on photo shoot sets, um, I was like, oh, this is so much more fun because like I get to like actually play around and do different things and like you know be more creative and so I felt like I was probably going to try and pursue that more um and I also always wanted to work at Mac ever since I got into makeup (laughs) so I worked at Mac um I was doing photo shoots and stuff like that and then uh I left I was no longer at Mac I was at this other makeup boutique got fired when I was just kind of like exploring Instagram and then that's why I started doing this yeah so and then that was all she wrote which like I wasn't planning to do this as a job yeah <laughs> so your plan at the time was to like continue doing photo shoots and like trying to work your way up in the industry um I remember feeling like at the time that I was fired and even like right before that kind of thing I remember like thinking almost every single day like what am I gonna do like ha- like I felt like I was like destined for more but I didn't know what that looked like or right. how I was gonna get there or what was something like tangible that I could do to like work towards that um and so I just remember every day being like so frustrated because I was like how how are people like affording houses how are they affording to travel how are they doing any of these things like I just don't understand because like I was making like just over minimum wage mm-hmm. you know and I felt like I was like busting my balls like (laughs) yeah at at these these different jobs you know and like it just it it didn't feel fulfilling and I didn't like um having to comply with like rules I didn't agree with and Mm -hmm. you know like just just all of like that structure of like a traditional workplace I just was like this is not it's like soul crushing to me truly on like such a deep level (laughs) it's honestly it's really hard for me to think about going back to like a nine to five job or like a yeah any sort of thing like it is <laughs> but, but that's the thing that's so interesting is that it's like we kind of just like accept that as like how things are but, yeah but when you experience like being your own boss and making your own schedule and not having to like you know abide by some rules that are made for what reason you know like Mm -hmm. there's so many things like within the workplace that it's like why is this even a a thing like why why are these like our um like procedures and like everything that is done is so old school in so many ways it's so brutal I would always combat those like the ones that I didn't agree with I think that like I ruffled some feathers sometimes but I also think it's what got me so far in the in the company that I was in because I would always come like with a solution though. Mm -hmm. I would be like, this is the rule. This is the issue with it. Here's how we could do it better. Yeah. Because I just, I I don't, I like the answer. I need to know why. And if I know the why, then I can like possibly come up with a better, a way that works better for the people who are actually like doing that procedure. You know what I mean? Because oftentimes these systems are put into place by the people who aren't having to do them Mm. and so it's and that was like a big thing about um for me like bar managers and stuff like that who aren't actually in the bar um which does happen at at different restaurants like certain different restaurants and stuff but it's like how can you really know what's wrong unless you have eyes inside the tornado you know what I mean yeah (laughs) it's like you can't really know like what your team needs unless you also have like a like person on the inside who kind of like goes back and forth and is like okay this is what we need but for me I'm just like let's like I like to do things myself. Let's cut to the chase, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Let's cut out the middleman. Um, but yeah, I totally agree. And I, I feel so <laughs> lucky and grateful that I am now doing what I'm doing uh, because it's dope. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's really hard for me to think, like, even when I'm talking about, um, like, being a yoga teacher and stuff like that, like, even having to drive to work. I know that that sounds like some type of way, but... It's just like now that I have this life, I'm like, okay, how can I do this though the way that I want to do it? Like the way that is truly like my dream Mm -hmm. way to do it sort of thing. Um, And it's just, yeah, it's interesting how quickly you abandon the other. (laughs) You're like, no, I'll do anything. (laughs) Except for that. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. But I mean, I think that's the thing is like, it's it's obviously like a luxury and like a privilege but at the same time it's like because so take advantage of that you know Mm -hmm. what I mean like take full advantage of like the opportunity to shape things the way that you want them to look and Mm -hmm. stuff and like I think that that's like like I just find it to be so much more fulfilling and like I feel a lot like like when I was in um 
a traditional workspace, I felt really directionless. I felt like I didn't understand, like, because I could, you can so clearly see the ceiling. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, I, I could see my boss and then th- there was like no one beyond that. So I'm like, I can't grow. I can't, you know, like, unless I'm replacing my fucking boss, like, I, where do I go from here kind of mm. thing? And so I hated that feeling of like, you know, and obviously it's like a little bit different within like larger companies and stuff but like I still just felt like man like I'm I'm not going to be able to like make changes this way I'm not going to be able to like grow the way that I want to or have you know like because I I think that um having your career evolve is like the most enjoyable part to me Mm. because like my job now looks so different from how it looked when I started Mm -hmm. um and that's kind of you know when we're like talking about like shaping things to be how you want them to be like that's like so satisfying yeah to me well and there are people who love a structured workplace Mm -hmm. don't get me wrong Mm -hmm. like I think that going back to MLMs for a second that's what they try to prey on is they're like do you hate your nine to five it's like not everybody hates their nine to five like you know lots of people love what they do and that's like they've worked really hard to get there and that's awesome and um I, I hate that MLMs do that. Just like automatically assume you hate your life because you're not selling their like essential oils. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> dee, dee, dee. Um, but yeah, I, I through COVID as well. Not to like obviously like reference COVID all the time because I'm sure that people want us to move on. But um, I have seen a lot of people on my Instagram, like acquaintances and friends and stuff like that, coming up with these like little jewelry companies mm-hmm. and like um, henna and like all of this stuff. And I'm just like, yes, like this is so yeah. cool, you know, like I don't think that you have to do that or whatever. But I just think that it's cool that that people had the time to be like, OK, but what what do I like? Like what kind of like mm-hmm. hobby can I do? I have a friend who um came up with a charcuterie board service i love a charcuterie board like a catering but it's like all charcuterie yeah i was like love it you know like what a niche market but like Mm -hmm. this is what you really like are loving to do and you decided okay i need to monetize this then but that's like when people aren't so like restrained to like this like typical kind of traditional setting I feel like you know like exactly like you said like they have the time to like Mm. explore other things and maybe like pursue other things because it feels like okay well I have the option now to do this because I'm not so hung up on like having to like work 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 which I mean obviously like it it bears like mentioning that um if of course it's like horrific that people are like losing their jobs and like of course horrifying numbers and stuff like that but um you know like I, I think the the opposite side of that where people are getting like this time is it's it's been really cool to watch people like flourish in like different areas Mm -hmm. and like to see how like like what would this person be doing if they had like limitless time and they had the ability to like do whatever they want to pursue yeah and it's kind of like getting a little bit of a glimpse into that yeah I'm and yeah I'm certainly not um yeah downplaying the atrocities that have come because of COVID of course um even just like the kids like having to go to school and like moms having to somehow become teachers overnight like yeah. o- obviously I'm just you know just trying to let them emerge um okay so now we've gone through our entire like Rolodex of jobs that we wanted to do what did you think about like family and like a home like where did you okay so where what did you picture when you pictured like yourself probably at 30 because we all thought that like that was the age where you <laughs> have your oh shit I was like aiming so much lower than that really yeah I wanted to have my ship fully together by 25 okay yeah and like I definitely always picture myself being rich but I feel like everyone does mm-hmm. like I feel like everyone's like oh yeah I'll be in this fucking dope ass house like you know like that's what you that's what you hope for yeah <laughs> um but that's the thing that's the the biggest um like juxtaposition to what my life actually looks like because I really wanted to settle down like super early and um when I was like a teenager and stuff like that and even when I was a kid like I whatever I was doing I picture myself married first like I was like I'm definitely gonna be married I know that much like (laughs) fuck a job like I'm gonna be married so um I really wanted to get married young I wanted to start having kids by 25 at like the latest okay and I wanted to have like at least three kids kind of thing and be done having kids by 30 
Okay. Um, well, snip, snap, snip, snap. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah right, exactly. <laughs> like pregnant back to back. But um, that was what I pictured for my life. And I think that I um, really put an emphasis on I wanted like to find a partner kind of thing. And I think also because I was dealing like with mental health issues, you know, from like the time I was like about 16 onwards, mm-hmm. I I was really under the impression that like if I just found the right person, right, they would fix that for me. And so I would put a lot of pressure on my partners feeling like, well, wh- like you're not making me happy because I felt like, ugh, like, can you not just pick up these pieces for me? You yeah. Know? Um, and so that was like a really big focus for me. And I literally could not be more opposite from that now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's I'm <laughs> like, you know, like if I if Matt and I got divorced for whatever reason, <laughs> like would would I pursue another relationship? I don't know that I would. Really? Like, what about kids? You would you would just have them yourself? Maybe. Hmm. I, I mean, I'm sure that I would eventually, but it definitely wouldn't be like like before. It was something where if I got out of a relationship, I would be like on to the next, like trying to find the next person that I was going to be with, kind of thing, and trying to like move that along really quickly. Oh, I see. Um, but yeah, I. I think that I would spend a long time single and not really give a fuck about it. Hmm. So, but what there about you? you? Um, when I was, like, younger, I didn't want kids. But I think it was because I was, this is what I was thinking about this morning. I think it's because when I was 15, I was told that I probably wouldn't be able to have kids mm-hmm. because my my I fractured my back when I was younger and they didn't really know like enough about it because we hadn't done all these MRIs and stuff like that but anyway um they thought that the issue was still slipping or whatever and he thought that if I were to carry a child like it I wouldn't be able to Mm -hmm. sort of thing um and so I don't really know what the conversation was because I kind of like blocked a lot of it out so sorry uh, often nurses and stuff like that come in here and they're like that's not right and it's like okay well maybe not but this is what I remember (laughs) you know what I mean this is what was true in my 15 year old brain um but I remember there was a conversation about I might not be able to have kids and so I think I just started being like well I don't want kids then yeah um but I am fertile it turns out perfect um yes I was talking to my doctor because I was like you know like I'm getting older like what's the deal (laughs) she's like no no you're good um just because I had had that thing I'm not like planning on having kids okay let's just get that out (laughs) I I hate that we have to say that (laughs) I know it's like I just wanted to see if it was an option okay (laughs) but it is an option for me um but yeah I think I just was like well it's fine I don't need to I did think that I was gonna get married originally when I was in I think it was like grade 11. I was like, yeah, I'm going to get married. And I'm going to get married to the person I'm dating right now. <laughs> and I know that for a fact. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, I didn't. Um, and then after high school, I didn't want to get married anymore. Oh, really? Why? No. I I just like didn't really see the benefit. I was like, I don't know. I have to share everything with someone and like – you know, what if we get divorced and then I have to go through a divorce and like marriage is just a contract. Like I was like, I was, it was, <laughs> you were that person. it was jaded without ever having been divorced. Yeah. You know? And so I just was like not interested in getting married for a really, really long time. And what changed? I think I just got older. Yeah. Yeah. Like I pr- probably like three years ago, I was like, yeah, I could get married. Eh, fuck it. Yeah. A contract. I'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, I just, I want to be able to one day call somebody my husband, you know? Like, I don't... It's weird, man. Is it? It is, yeah. Because you still... But you say you feel like a kid still, so it's probably like you're like, my husband. (laughs) Yeah, I feel like it's like a little bit of like an imposter syndrome, like not in like a way that's really like killing me inside, but like it's just odd like it's just yeah. weird um but I also thought that I would feel really differently about like changing my last name and stuff like I didn't think I would have an issue with that at all like I, I every single partner that I ever talked to when they we ever talked about marriage they're like would you take my last name I'm like sure yeah like I did not give a fuck and then when it came time I was like oh, do I want to change my last name because I think that I've really gotten like on my <laughs> soapbox about like women's issues <laughs> yeah and like I just don't I don't know something about it I'm like this feels like I'm like giving up part of me Mm -hmm. permanently Mm -hmm. and it's so like symbolically yeah odd to do you know like and now I feel so weird about it 
Yeah, I knew very young I didn't want to change my last name. Oh, really? But I will. Oh, really? Yeah. I really, really like the last name Anderson. I don't know. It's like a weird thing. It's like thing. a good AA situation. Yeah, yeah. I really like it. But um, I do want to change my last name if I get married. Mostly just I want to have the same last name as my kids. Yeah. You know, and my kids will have their dad's last name. Um, and I'm, I've, I would say I'm more like... Um, I don't want to say traditional because that kind of has like a bad connotation to it. But I don't I don't mind certain traditions. Yeah. Um, and so I, I would change my last name. And then, you know, we all have like the family name sort of thing. And yeah. Whatever. Not that I see anything like wrong with the opposite, but. I think I'll eventually change my name um, legally. But like I, I'll probably always go under my current like surname. But also because like I, I, I didn't like my name growing up just because people like didn't know how to pronounce it and didn't know how to spell it and stuff like that. So it was just almost like I was annoyed by it. Mm-hmm. Um, but now I feel like my last name is like cool and it's unique and whatever. So and it's also like, you know, like my tie to my family of origin, you know. Yeah. So it's it's sort of like, I don't know, it's just weird. And I, I like being able to like go under that name publicly. So I feel like I'll, I'll never change it publicly, but we'll see. Yeah. I don't know. Hmm. But it's just so interesting to me, like how much can change. Like I, I say this sometimes and you guys are like, you probably weren't that bad. I can't hammer in to you guys enough how <laughs> different I was. You wouldn't even like you would be shocked. You would be like, what? Yeah. Like, it's crazy. I was so, so different. And sometimes I forget that I haven't like uh, they like people don't know me from back yeah. then. So I'll bring things up and people will be like you don't know anything about that and I'm like oh you don't know (laughs) and I was talking to one of my friends about it because I was like it's just like upsetting but it's like it's my fault because I don't like talk about it and they're like okay this is how I see you very wholesome Mm -hmm. (laughs) like grandma-esque you know what I mean and I'm just like it's so crazy because I still don't see myself that way why do you think I think because I know (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's too much history yeah. <laughs> but I was I was like I was a wild wild kid yeah like a wild like 19 year old 20 year old like even into like 22 you know it's very like recent that I've really really changed my life so it's it's been interesting to like hear other people speak even to me about me and I'm like who's that Sorry, who's that positive, happy (laughs) person? (laughs) But it's cool to kind of like be like a fly on the wall in my own circle. Do you know what I mean? To be like, oh, wow, like you really can reinvent yourself if you so choose, however many times you choose. When you were in that like phase of like partying, can I say that? Yeah. Um, Did you picture yourself leaving that lifestyle or not really? Or were you just, like, so, like, in the thick of it that you weren't really paying attention? It went through waves, for Mm. sure. Like, at the beginning, I was like, oh, I'm a party girl. I'm a bar star. (laughs) Like, all this kind of stuff. Um, As I got deeper into it, I definitely wanted out, (laughs) I will say. But there comes a certain point sometimes where it's really, really hard to find your way out. Yeah. And so it's kind of like what you want at that point might not matter (laughs) because it just doesn't feel like achievable accessible yeah Yeah, at that time but I mean obviously I did yeah get out but um yeah it's weird to think like I really believe in changing your surroundings and some people call it like running away sometimes I did run away not actually but you know what I mean I would move to like get away from like my problems or whatever but I really believe in that like if if I hadn't left my hometown I honestly have no idea Well, I do think, like, as much as we obviously have, you know, like, autonomy, like, over, like, our own body and choices and stuff like that, to some extent, I do believe that you are, like, a product of your surroundings. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you're spending time with people that are into one thing or the other, you're you're probably going to follow suit at least a little bit. You know what I mean? Like, you're probably going to be doing some of the same things. So I think, yeah, that makes, like, perfect sense. Yeah. And I think it's – I needed to be shown that I was, like, more – Mm. than what I was doing like that there was more for me yeah (laughs) you know I am like a capable individual and like my my worth doesn't lie in like being the what do people call me an animal they call me an animal Mm. like but I liked that you know what I mean I was like yeah like I'm a savage because it was like your identity (laughs) exactly yeah and I 
by moving for me I was shown that I could have a like another sort of identity you know and it was still true to who I was it was just like accessing a new part of myself Mm -hmm. and it kind of felt like every time I moved I accessed a new part of myself and have now like created somebody that I'm actually like proud of yeah by by the growth well that's what I feel like changed like especially around the like the relationship thing and feeling like I was going to be like reliant upon like men and stuff like I really I I think that like I didn't have like high um expectations for myself career-wise because I just was like oh I'll I'll be like a unit with whomever I end up with kind of thing and it wasn't until I started doing like this as a job where I was like oh why would I need right whom why would I need anyone because like I can do this all myself and like I can grow on my own and I can be like all the things that I want and I can provide myself with that and I think that that was like a really liberating experience for me because it it took a lot of pressure off of my relationships like I didn't feel like I was looking to that person to like fill this like cup you know because I was already filling my own cup yeah it was like a a partner became more of a choice in your mind than a necessity yeah for sure yeah yeah and I think that that was like super it was just really freeing Mm mm-hmm it's like Cher said in an interview, her mom was saying, you need to marry a rich man. And she was like, mom, I am a rich man. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, damn, Cher. Yeah. <laughs> you cool. That's exactly it. Yeah. But what's your, uh, what's your sights for the future, ma'am? I, it's funny because I feel like I've changed my sights for the future so many times, even in the last year. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it's hard for me to say, but right now, over the past year, like I've obviously people probably noticed, like I've gotten a lot more into like fitness and kind of you probably know that yeah, I've gotten really like, fitness. I've been, been in the gym working on my fitness, <laughs> not that way because I'm like <laughs> posting about it on my Instagram yeah. all the time. Uh. <laughs> but I don't know. I'm I'm a lot more into um, I I guess moving my body. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like it really helps with my anxiety. It really helps with like keeping me happy. <laughs> So I know that I want to do something right now anyway in that field. And that's kind of where I want to go is create a yoga empire. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. No, I like I said before, like five years ago, that's what I wanted to do. And so now it's kind of like coming full circle. And I definitely want to do it in my own way, in whatever way is like possible. So it'll be fun to kind of like map out what my future will look like involving yoga. And something you and I have talked about too is that to a lot of people yoga doesn't actually feel that um inviting Mm -hmm. like almost like it's like this elite sort of or like it's it feels like a very specific subculture that like I it's like almost like you can tell if someone's like into yoga or not right that's what I feel like so like I feel like if people were to look at me they'd be like "Eh, you don't strike me as someone that would do yoga on their off time and you would be right right now yeah um (laughs) But yeah, I think that's because I was super like, I I would have never gone to a yoga class if I hadn't gone with like you first. Yeah. And I want to, I, that would be like one of my main goals is to make yoga more approachable. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, because I really, I believe in moving your body and even like people who talk to me about, um, like they have injuries and stuff like that I'm like just like do not that I'm giving like advice but they're you know my friends and they're like oh this is hurting I'm like why don't you just do like a little bit of like light yoga like light stretching sort of thing and they're like because I'm not flexible and I'm like I hate that that is like the immediate thing that people think of when they think of yoga yeah because it's not necessary Mm -hmm. you don't have to be flexible to do yoga I'm not flexible for shit these days yeah you are you're pretty flexible your quads are really flexible thanks yeah you can like lay right back down yeah but like I'm not (laughs) <laughs> I was going to say I'm flexible going backwards but not forward. Okay. But, like, that's the truth. <laughs> like, I can't, like, bend over and touch my fucking toes right. and shit. But that's – there's – oh, anyway. I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> I'm not certified, so I need to, like, shut my mouth. But, um, yeah, I think that yoga is for everyone, and I want to – I want to prove it. Yeah. You know what I mean? I want everyone to feel comfortable doing yoga. I mean, it definitely, like, when I was doing it consistently, like, my body felt so good. My, like, mind felt so good. Mm -hmm. Like, it really was, like, a very, like, I would go as far as, say, transformative activity. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. And then Mm -hmm. I can can teach you yoga every single day. I love it. 
yo that's what i want to do what about you um i would really like to have a makeup line one day that's a goal um so you know i'm just trying to chip away at that (laughs) um that's kind of like my biggest thing because i want something that i can you know eventually step away from social media if i want to because i do think that when i have kids and stuff I'll want to be really present and I and I think that it will be hard for me mentally to um juggle being on social media in the way that I have been for the past eight years Mm -hmm. um and also be like a really present mom and be like emotionally and mentally there for them because Mm -hmm. social media takes up like so much of my capacity in that area Mm -hmm. so I I think that it'll it would be nice to have something that's still like a really fulfilling job that's still connected to like you know the place where I feel most creative um but you know if I if I want to be able to kind of step away a little bit then I can um and also because I want to create something lasting like I think that I you know have worked to gain this platform that I have um and I want to be able to like utilize that in a way that is lasting and and also like with having a business I feel like I can make more of an impact in so many different ways because like you are creating jobs um and you know like you have more uh sort of like freedom in terms of like what you can do around like donations and charities Mm. and stuff like that and like just things that you can do through a business that like as a person like you can still you know like fundraise and do all these things and like I can do that on my platform currently but I feel like it's a lot easier to do it on a larger scale through a business um and so I just like the idea of being able to you know have that as like a next step for a platform for everything that I want to do um so I think that's like my biggest my biggest thing um and then I want to live in the woods oh yeah yeah we got big dreams you know big commune dreams have we I can't remember if we told them about the commune or not. No, we haven't. Go go hard. Listen, okay, I've gotten really into permaculture. I like the idea of living in a commune. (laughs) Yeah, we must have talked about this because we were talking about cults. Yeah. I think that we, like, skimmed over it, though. I don't think... and Because I've talked about, like, the cul-de-sac thing. That's where this all stemmed from, was, like, us living on a cul-de-sac together. The cul-de-sac became a full-blown commune. Yeah. So I like the idea of buying a bunch of land having Alyssa's house there having my house there and then probably like my parents will be involved <laughs> yeah in some capacity they're getting they'll, have, in. they'll have a house as well yeah um and then I like the idea of like basically just growing our own food and making jams and marmalades and I said that I would contribute by making hot sauce and possibly kombucha but it is a little bit harder to make kombucha than hot sauce but like hopefully <laughs> we'll have the time yeah um and then I just mean like health wise like oh is it <laughs> yeah because you have to like ferment and like grow I know nothing about it okay but I do know that there's a way to like fuck it up yeah oh I'm sure <laughs> so I'd need like that makes sense <laughs> some sort of like liability insurance <laughs> <laughs> it you, anytime you can bring the conversation back to insurance <laughs> Listen, it's You're like, like, allow me to do so. My my 11-year-old self is lawyer, <laughs> lawyerly. <laughs> just like, you need insurance for this. Yeah. Um, anyway. Um, but yeah, I just want to, I want to grow our own food and then we can make various goods out of these foods, you know, pickles, jams, hot sauce, marmalades, mm-hmm. pasta sauce, maybe soups. Bread. Bread. Um, focaccio all kinds of <laughs> shit. And then I want to go to a farmer's market and sell my, sell my wares. And then um, just donate that money to wherever because I'm planning on being rich again. Yeah. This is a large part of this commune being able to take place because yeah. Vancouver, damn. Yeah. It's expensive out we'll here. We'll probably have to move out of Vancouver. Yeah. yeah. Um, but that's what I would like to do. I would like to live my little cottage lifestyle in the commune and um, I don't know, I guess be tied together forever. Yeah. Is the plan. Mm-hmm. And like you know like I just like the idea of a commune like fair share everyone's working and providing well, and like the and, kids too yeah man you know because that like you know then there's two of us to take care of your kids and there's like people to take care of our kids like when we need like a day or like a night you know what I mean like yeah. a little day date or something like that it's so close even though Matt wants me to have my house like the so far that you have to drive a golf cart to get to it he has like a like do I feel like a commune's lofty 
Actually, no, I don't. <laughs> Do I feel like having a fucking golf cart's lofty? For some reason, yes. Yeah, that sounds a little. That like, seems excessive. like a step. We're not a fucking resort in Cancun, <laughs> Matt. <laughs> this is a commune in the woods. <laughs> There will be no golf carting. This is what I think is a good uh, compromise, okay? Your guys' house and then the fire pit and like the yoga studio and stuff like that. In the middle space, yes. Yeah, in the middle and then our house. So it's like you can't really see our house from your house. It's not like I can like talk to you from my house. I don't know why Matt's even like having a feeling about this because he literally doesn't leave the house anyways. He like sits in his like one room with the shutters closed (laughs) like and that's what he does like it's not like he's gonna be out and about and like having to bump into you guys yeah maybe he just like is trying to steal our love from us it kind of feels that way it does feel that way what did what did jeff say last night though he said something to try to steal our love too oh yeah he said he wanted to create a fucking wall (laughs) and i was like god damn donald (laughs) Yeah, he said to keep to keep Sam out. Jesus, he wants to put a, a literal physical barrier between us. Well, I think first he said a moat, which is also fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> Your boyfriend's trying to have me drowned. Uh, They're trying to keep us from each other. Yeah, <laughs> They're give us our <laughs> ladies back. Brutal. Yeah, but anyways, that's the future goals. Yeah. So that's where we have our combined. See how it all kind of comes together? Yeah. <laughs> and it becomes a combined goal in the end? Yeah. That's the whole point of it. Exactly. Common. Anyway, yeah. So that's our plan for the future. I'm going to have a yoga empire. Um, Sam's going to be a businesswoman for the rest of her life. Yeah. As we could have expected, probably. Yeah. And then we're going to live in the commune with our kids. Yeah. Go to the farmer's market. So you'll see us there every Sunday. Yeah. And know that your proceeds are going back into the economy somehow. Yeah. Or the community. The, yeah, rather. not the economy. <laughs> well, <laughs> technically the economy yeah, as well, so. but, but back into the community. Yeah. I think that I would continue with social media anyway because I like it. I mean, I'm sure that I would continue like posting photos and stuff like that here and there, but I, I just don't know. I don't know. And maybe I'll change my mind, but like I think that I will like to have – I would like to have the opportunity to be able to – at the very least be less involved because it's not like my only form of income and not that that's the only reason I do social media but (sighs) like you know like it's 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 still a job at the end of the day Mm -hmm. and like it does it impacts my mental health negatively in in some ways so I think you know in in an effort to be there 100% mind body soul for my family that's what I'll do Look at you. You sound like you're part of the yoga empire already. I am part of the yoga empire. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I just wanted to like showcase how much can change and like, you know. You're in control of your own life. I, I will say it is hard to change your life sometimes, but sometimes it kind of just like happens without you even noticing. Yeah. And that's kind of nice too. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I've always, I've said so many times, there's no amount of, there's no limit to the amount of times that you can start over. Yeah. And I've, that the truth? I've proven that. <laughs> People always ask me, what's your goal in life? My goal in life is to be happy. Yeah. Okay. Because like without happiness, what are you really searching for then? Mm-hmm. Because like our, our goal for money and for whatever, it's like, it, it, Ultimately, it's to be content or happy. Yeah. So I want I want to get there. Yeah. So I, I basically do every, like, everything that I try to do in a day, not everything, but most things I try to do in a day are literally <laughs> ever, from sunup <laughs> to sundown. <laughs> are, it's in an effort to get me back to a state of happiness or mm-hmm. to continue and maintain my state of happiness. And yeah. that's really all I have to say about that. <laughs> I think that's a beautiful ending point. Thanks. <laughs> that's it. All right. Well, thank you guys for joining us on another episode. And we'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye.